Welcome back to another special episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Today, we are interviewing RB alum, Dana Redke. Dana, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Of course. Thanks for having me. Today, we're going to wrap up some of her past career and her future career. So, starting, starting off, you grew up playing lots of sports. You, you talked about you had a, your first love of sport was basketball. Mm-hmm. And then that came until you started playing competitive volleyball in your freshman year. What stood yes. out about volleyball that made you choose it over basketball? Ooh, great question. Um, yeah, so I grew up playing all different types of sports in middle school, just kind of outside extracurricular activities. I was a really big dancer. I tried out swimming. I did track and field, softball, basketball. Um, I just loved to learn, and I loved to be a part of like a team, and I loved to play sports. Um, but what did I love most about volleyball from basketball was probably just the team culture and team atmosphere. Um, it's very two very different sport cultures when you talk about volleyball and basketball. And um, I mean, I loved basketball. It was really like my first love of a sport. But when it came to just the team aspect of volleyball, it fit my personality way more. Just a lot more energy, a lot more excitement, in my opinion, and just a lot more like team togetherness. I like to say in volleyball, you're kind of as strong as your weakest link. When in basketball, you like you can have really one person take the ball and score all your points, and like it's awesome. But in volleyball, you don't have control of where the ball goes necessarily. Um, at least when it comes over on your side of the net initially. And so um, I just love that you have, you really have to work as one unit, I think more so than in any other sport. And um, yeah, I just thought that it fit my personality way more. I'm very energetic, very bubbly. I love to celebrate and you see us celebrate in between every single point. And so, um, yeah, I just, that was probably the biggest thing that stood out to me. And then I just fell in love with practicing. which for me, like as an athlete, you kind of need to love that process. And I didn't necessarily love that in basketball. I loved competing in basketball, but the ins and outs of the everyday of practicing and something that I didn't love as much. So those are kind of the two big things of why I made the switch. That's awesome that you were able to find a sport that really fits your style of play in that team atmosphere setting. But you're being incredibly modest here because what many don't know is that you actually had a couple of recruitment offers from basketball in your playing time. Was there a specific Mm -hmm. moment where when you decided to pivot sports that you decided maybe basketball isn't for me and I want to give volleyball a try? Yeah, I had a couple of moments like that. I was actually getting more basketball offers at the time than volleyball and going on more basketball visits than volleyball. Um, Because I was still kind of trying to, I was still figuring out what I wanted to do. And when I, Real, like the, the the moment that I made the switch was when I was actually on a basketball visit. I went to the University of Illinois and I was down in Champaign-Urbana. I did a practice with the team at the time. And I think I was a, I was going into my sophomore year. So um, obviously very young, very inex- or I was experienced in basketball and probably more, definitely more so than I was in volleyball, but still I had no place competing with college girls at that time. And I remember being there with my dad and I mean, I hung in there in practice. Like, I don't think it was, you know, get off until I was younger, but I thought I held my own pretty well. And, but after that practice, I kind of left the gym being like, I don't really know if I want to do this anymore. I don't know if this is really going to be the path for me. Um, Basketball is a much more physical sport. And while I loved that aspect of basketball, my body wasn't really built for that. And I also wasn't it just it didn't make me feel good anymore just the high the pounding on my joints the constant like like beating up against somebody like wasn't great for my body anymore and at a young age that's really not something you want to do if you're looking to like start a career in something so yeah um that was after that I went into the car with my dad and I was like I don't know if I really want to do this anymore it's like, yeah, it's probably a good choice. And then from that moment on, I kind of was like, all right, let's explore the options. Let's really get into playing volleyball at a more at a, at a higher level. Let's try to like see what where I can go from here because I had just started playing volleyball that year competitively, and that means like outside of high school, like at a club. And in order to get recruited from colleges, you really need to play club volleyball. But they don't really recruit from high school. Maybe a little bit more on the boys' side, but not for girls at all. 
and um yeah i i just remember like thinking to myself i don't really know what this is going to look like i don't know if i mean i'm gonna go to a big school i don't know like where i'm gonna end up but i'm gonna fully commit myself to try and to earn myself a volleyball scholarship and try to find a good fit for me and go from there and so yeah after that visit at university of illinois i kind of made that decision like yeah i'm really gonna focus solely on volleyball now yeah, obviously switching over to a sport where you have really one year of knowledge to and game to, it takes a lot of hard work to really pursue and get a lot better in the sport. When did you come to realize that you were really on the, another level compared to everyone else in volleyball? I think I noticed that I was going, that I was on a really good path probably my senior year of high school. Really? Um, yeah. I think my junior year, like, I committed to Wisconsin my sophomore year, which was, like, I still didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, I didn't even switch to, like, a more competitive club at that point. Um, and so I kind of was like, okay, like, this is fun, like, I'm getting better, like, yay. And when I really was like, okay, like, I think I'm actually doing something great here was my senior year. Um, I mean, going into your freshman year of college, they have, like, all these, like, lists and rankings and awards and blah. And not that this really means much, but just to see that I was on, like, the national stage in terms of, like, club volleyball players, I think for me was huge because that was – I was I was kind of in that stage a little bit in basketball, but not necessarily in volleyball at all. Um, so, yeah, you have, like, your Under Armour All-Americans. You have, like, your rankings for best recruits or whatever, but – um, when I saw like that stuff coming out, my name was on it. I was like, oh wait, maybe I am on the right path and I am doing something really good for, with like against my peers who have been playing this sport since they were, you know, six, seven, eight years old. So it gave me a lot of confidence going into my freshman year, but yeah. Absolutely. And then you also went on to win Gatorade Player of the Year, many other accolades during your high school career. And what's also very interesting is that you were in a unique situation where you committed D1 your sophomore year. Many people who commit D1 commit junior year or even senior year. Did this kind of make you play with a little more freedom your junior and senior years? Did you feel a little more relaxed that, hey, I can just go out and play my game. I don't have to worry about being recruited, playing the way that these colleges want me to play now that I already have that scholarship offer? Maybe a little bit, yeah. I don't really think that there was something – like. I didn't really know a difference, right? Because I had just started playing this sport like at a higher level maybe a year ago, and now I was committed to Wisconsin. Um, but there was part of me that was like, okay, that, like the, that decision's made, like it's done. And I remember being like my junior and senior years and like talking to my friends and everyone's like submitting their college applications and like doing all of that, trying to figure out where they're gonna go. But that stress was never really on me. Um, I guess from like an academic standpoint, but like from a volleyball standpoint, I feel like I still had a lot of work to do. And my coach, Kelly Sheffield at Wisconsin, made that very clear to me. Um, like to the point where I really had to start focusing on volleyball. I was still playing basketball at the time and I had made that choice my going into my junior year that I was going to stop playing basketball because I had yeah. to focus on volleyball and I had to put those hours in and I had to just really, I had to give this all I had for the next three years going into college because I had to put myself in a good position to be able to compete at the highest level. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Hold on one second. Um, Got the birds in the background. That's Yeah, really I know. Here. It's very relaxing, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think going going into like a situation like that there is a little bit of maybe like a, a sense maybe not it wasn't really relaxing I wouldn't say but it was more just like okay like I know what's happening but I still need to work my butt off to try to get to where I want to be um because like I still have to be able to try to compete for a roster spot at Wisconsin and I still need to be able to compete against players who have been playing since they were you know 10 years old so, yeah, I think while it, there was some relief to it, there was definitely, like, the bar had been set high at that point once I made that decision and committed. So, 
just kind of playing that game a little bit. Yeah, of course. And having your mind set really helps in volleyball as it is as much as a mind game as it is a physical aspect of the game. But you, you talked about going into your freshman year. You also said you had initial clicks with your teammates that were in your class. Did that really help you, like, evolve to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like, in the club volleyball scene, you kind of all played together. So we had players from the Chicagoland area. You have player, like teams from Wisconsin coming down. You have teams from minnesota you have ohio like really it's all the midwest that come together every weekend to play in these tournaments and so through that i found like you always see your friends and people that you met at camps and people that you've met um like doing college visits and then you know the players that you are going to be like teammates with for the, for the next four years and that was the case for me and i remember just going to these club tournaments every weekend and we all had like a badger commits group chat and we'd be like we're going to this tournament like what's your schedule like can we hang out and um yeah we were able to form like really really special bonds and connections um like i remember going on like a spring break trip my junior year with one of my best friends her name's mariah whalen and she was a badger with me um one of my other friends, Grace Loberg, we still keep in touch. And we had actually played basketball against each other in eighth grade. She's from Geneva. And so we like we knew about each other through basketball, but then ended up committing to Wisconsin to play volleyball together, which was kind of crazy. And so yeah, it was it's kind of a small world when it comes to to the volleyball world and honestly any sports scene. So when we were able to see each other, which was honestly every weekend, because we were all playing these tournaments every weekend, we got to be really close. And that was really important for us going into like a pretty hard situation, being a freshman on, you know, at a really big university. Um, we were able to really establish those friendships and those connections in order to like, one, like get us really excited about going to school together. And then two, I think it made it really, that transition a little bit easier in knowing that you had your friends around you. So, um, so yeah. Evidently, clearly club volleyball really prepared you for that national stage and competing at the highest level at the university. You were a member of the First Alliance Volleyball Club and you helped your team to two top 25 national finishes before heading into college. So segueing into your freshman year at University of Wisconsin where we could go on and on about your accolades and your awards, I want to talk about your, how you started every single game. I want to, like, how did you handle being thrust into such an important role right away as a freshman, was it daunting starting every game? Yeah, so when I went into Wisconsin, I didn't even know if I was gonna be starting. Um, there's this thing called a red shirt where it's more of a developmental year. Um, so you, you get then an extra year at the university on scholarship and everything, but you don't compete in matches. I thought I was gonna be doing that. Um, so it's really just a year. A lot of freshmen take it in order to like develop their skill set, all of that. So you basically sit out a year, and then you play your four years after that. Um, I thought that was going to be my path, but um, I had graduated early from RB. I graduated after my first semester of my freshman or my my senior year. Sorry, not freshman year. That'd be crazy. Um, my my first semester of my senior year, and I went to Wisconsin for that second semester of my senior year, where I should have been at RB. And I did that because I wanted to get in a little bit early and start training, preparing my, preparing myself. I wanted to get a little bit of a head start on school. Um, so that's what I did. And I did it with three or two other girls in my class, which was really, really helpful. But it was really a really big adjustment, like in terms of school, in terms of volleyball, in terms of the workouts. Like I had never done anything like that before in club volleyball. Like now you're really living in this whole, like you go to school, you train, you sleep, you eat. Like that was kind of what I did. So I think that semester for me was huge in my developmental years, um, or in my developmental stage, because I think that's when my coaches were like, okay, like she's she's getting good. Like she can do something great for us. And um, I think that really helped me earn a starting spot my freshman year, which I don't think going in anyone really expected, but again, just through training, through workouts, through just applying myself to my sport, I think great things happen and I was able to, you know, earn that starting spot. Um, yeah, I think it was something that maybe we all had hopes but not really expected. And so when it actually happened, it was, it was pretty cool. 
but yeah, the mental side of that, I don't really know. I kind of just went in and was like, all right, let's do this thing. Let's let it rip. And it kind of works out well for me. <laughs> but the mental prep going into that, I kind of was like, okay, like, here we are. Like, we got to do it. It's all running away. We just, we're here. We got to, we got to mm. start. We got to do this. And, um, it was way more fun for me than, um, I guess. That was work. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone knows that you can't have a job if you can't have fun at your job. But exactly. not only. That's very true. Yeah. Not <laughs> only did you have fun at your job, you destroyed your job in your freshman year. You became, you were on the all Big Ten team. You were AVCA first team All-American. And you were the national freshman of the year. How did these awards really help you keep getting better throughout your college or collegiate career? Yeah, that freshman year was, I feel like it was kind of a shock to everybody, at least to me. Um, I never thought that I would even be, I didn't even know there was a National Freshman Player of the Year award, let alone that it was going to be going to me. <laughs> um, so that was crazy. And I just think throughout that year, I did such a good job of just staying present in the moment and just focusing on one thing at a time. And like, I didn't know what I was doing, like in terms of putting up the numbers I was putting up every night. Um, I remember there was one day my freshman year where my college coach, he pulled me into his office and called a meeting with me. And he had just numbers on the board, like hitting percentages. And he's like, do you know what this is? I was like, nope. <laughs> and he like, he had the, like behind a, like a little thing was like the player's names whose hitting percentages they were. And it was like, Haley Washington, who's one of my teammates on the national team, you know, amazing volleyball player, Penn State grad. So, like, for me, like, she was kind of, like, the standard of what I wanted to mm -hmm. become and reach because she was just so, so good. So, it was Haley Washington, it was me. And I, he was like, do you, do you realize this? And I was like, no. Like, I, I, I couldn't have told you, like, that I was even 10th on this list, let alone second, right? Um. So, yeah, like, it was really kind of a shock for me. Like, I didn't really realize what I was doing or what I had done until after, until the end of that year. Like, I knew I was doing good things. I was getting, you know, like, the Player of the Week awards and whatever. But I think when you put it on, like, a national stage, it kind of makes it a little bit bigger, you know? Um, so when I did get those awards, that was pretty awesome. Like, I was super stoked. I couldn't believe that I was, you know, a freshman with a first-team All-American award. And I don't think that there's been many that that's happened to and um like being able to be with some of the greats of our sport at such a young age was really awesome but at the end of that year like the standard had been set right and so um i wasn't gonna let that drop and um i was now you know people people had their eyes on me people were out to get me people were circling my name on their scouting reports you know try to stop her and I didn't really, I didn't want that to happen. Like I just kept, it, it really fueled me going into my sophomore year and then on into my senior year to just keep getting better and better. Cause I knew I had to target up at that now and not even just me, my whole team. And so I wanted to support them the best I could and do the best I could for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your career games against North Carolina, Michigan state, Lipscomb, list goes on and on your freshman year. And then your ascension just continued on. I can name some of the accolades right here. You were first team All-American every single year you played, Big Ten Female Athlete of the Year in your 2019, 2020 season, as well as in your last season. And then let's talk about the national championship that you led your team to in 2021, kind of the pinnacle of all your successes right here. Um, you were named to the NCAA Final Four All-Tournament team, but was, was there something different about this team relative to other years that really you think was a difference maker? Yeah, oh my gosh like one of my favorite years to talk about um so going into 2021 i it was the year after covid and so everyone in the ncaa was granted an extra year of eligibility due to all the craziness that was covid mm -hmm. and so i didn't think i was going to take mine i thought i was like okay maybe it's time for me to go pro and like do all that but something just came over me one day when i was down in florida with my family and i was like i think i need to stay i think i need to i need to like wait this one out and i need to like I need to do this thing with my teammates. A lot, all, almost all of my class had decided that they were going to stay already. And I was the last one. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm all in. I'm, I'm doing this thing. 
And so when we came in that year, it was like we're on a mission. We had a lot of fifth years for sure. Um, a lot of girls that I had played with for my whole entire career. It was had a really, really talented freshman class coming in. And then like also just really talented team in general. And um, the two years prior, we made it to the final four. In 2019, we made it to the final four. We lost the national championship. In 2020, we made it to the final four, but lost in the final four. Or lost in the semis. So we had been so close, right? Like we had been so close that we all came into that year and was like, we're winning national championship. And we're going to conduct ourselves in a way that that's going to happen, which is freaking hard. Like you have to, we were up at six o'clock in the morning doing our workouts. We were like, t- we had to take care of all of our school stuff, make sure that we were getting everything done in advance. We weren't having stress towards the end of the year and making sure that we're practicing at a high level, holding a high standard. And honestly, it just, the vibe on that team just felt so different because we were so driven in a, in one direction like there was not one piece that was even like a little bit out of line like everybody a team of i don't even know how many it was that year maybe 19 20 i don't know we were all so on the same track and when that happens it's so so powerful but go i mean we had some hiccups that year absolutely i think we lost some games that we really did not want to lose and we know we can win but um going into that tournament it was like we were just firing on all cylinders and it was so so awesome like oh, there was like an energy like electricity about that team and that tournament run that you know i don't even know if i can really fully put into words but going into that final four it was those were probably the most iconic final four matches to my like to ever probably be played going into the semi-final we played against louisville and they were the number one ranked team at the time we were number four and we ended up beating them in five. It was their first loss of the season. Remember, it was neck and neck until in a fifth set, you played 15 points. Um, it's tie break set. And so we were neck and neck until like 0. 0.8. And then we just took off. And it was like, I think we ended the match like 15 to nine or 10 or something like that. And then the next game we had played, we were, we were playing Nebraska, which Nebraska is probably is one of our rivals in the Big Ten. The Natty, and they had just yeah. won. Yeah, yeah, in the national championship. Um, and we had just, like, we were definitely one of our rivals, and we had beat them a lot going into that game. And it's really hard to beat a really good team mm-hmm. consistently, you know? Um, so going into that match, I mean, we were like, all right, like, you know what we got to do? We know this team so well. We really do. We played them, I think, two two or three times already that season. And so we know this team really well. We watch them all the time. We just got to go and do what we know how to do. And there's, there's not, there's no changing anything at that point. You're already at the national championship. It's not like anything crazy is going to happen, you know, like, so we almost went down two to zero. I think it was like, they had match point or a set point in the second, maybe two or three points. And we fought it off and we come back and we make it one, one. And we go up 2-1, and they come up and make it 2-2, so we're going to another fifth set. And I remember we came out dominating that set. I think it was like 8-1 to one going into that set. Um, I remember an overpass came over. I went and hit it. They dug it. Like, I should have gotten the kill. But they had then they started this, this pretty massive run. And they got it to, like, might have been, like, 12, like, I think it was it was fourteen twelve when it was game point for you was guys. Was it fourteen twelve? Okay, so they came back fourteen yeah. twelve when we're eight to one. Like this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we ended up winning the fifth set fifteen to twelve. And it's like, let me talk about stress and yeah, pressure. I know. That was crazy. Um, but yeah, it was just when that final ball dropped like everything that had kind of happened in my whole career all the good the bad the ugly the really fun the really hard all of it just kind of like came to a peak at that moment and like we had we had done what we set out to do and it was wisconsin's first national championship and that's why my class the senior class at that point had come to wisconsin because it's never been done before we wanted to be the first to do that and um we did it and it was so exciting so cool i was on cloud nine we all were and then all of a sudden it was like okay you're done now you're going overseas and i was like what (laughs) but yeah no such an incredible run such an incredible year 
will like never ever forget like certain points in that match and certain feelings that I had and like just there's been so many there's so many moments of that game that just like they're ingrained in my brain forever and um yeah super grateful to have experienced that and to have won a national championship with that group was so awesome yeah of course and I mean one of the moments has to be the final kill that you put down your setter actually drew the block so you had no block you ran the slide and you kind of destroyed the ball and (laughs) and how how did it feel like how that moment feel like when you saw like the ball hit the floor and you turned around and your whole team's running at you yeah that moment was like disbelief honestly um because prior to that they we had won the game they had hit a or nebraska hit a ball we didn't touch it they challenged it. We still didn't touch it to this day. I did not touch that ball. <laughs> Game's over. It doesn't matter. I did not touch that ball. They overturned it some way, somehow, saying that we touched it, which is incredible. But so, like, after that, it was like, we, after that moment, we had to really refocus because sometimes those moments can get a little bit, you know, out of hand mm. when that happens. And we just kind of came in and we locked back in. And, like, that rally was nuts. Like, it I don't know. It was a long rally. <laughs> In it long, I remember I was the first ball I hit in that rally. I had burned them on that ball. I don't know how many times. Like I was like, that's the shot that they're not defending. And I went up and I hit high five six, and the middle back digs it. She hasn't been there for the past like three games. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> then she goes back and she sets Grace two more balls in a row. They get crazy digs, incredible digs. Um, and I don't think people realize like that set that Sydney, that's my setter's name, she set me really one handed, just like tight to the net, like flicked it back to the block. Like that is such a hard set to make. She made it look effortless. She made it look perfect. She made it look like she could do it in her sleep. But that is just such a hard set to make. And just the like everything that happened in that rally, like after the ball dropped, it was just like, oh my God, like we just did this thing. Like we did it against. A lot, you know? Yeah. Um, I and so it was. And everything. Yeah, exactly. And I, like, yeah, that moment, I was just, I was in disbelief. I was in shock. Because um, I think you, you, you set yourself up for those successful moments, right? You try to conduct yourself in a way that you're like, I'm going to do everything in my, in my control to make, to like try to make this happen. But that's never a guarantee. It's never a guarantee that you're going to win. Even if you practice perfectly, if you, like eat the perfect diet if you drink the right amount it doesn't ma- like you drink the right amount of water it doesn't matter like so when like moments like that happen and the hard work pays off it's really just something special and that was one of the first moments like in my career that that has happened um like on a t- at a team level so it was really really awesome super special and then we were just like after that, after the disbelief kind of set in. I didn't really like set until like after we left the arena. That it was just like, whoa, like yeah. we did it. So, um, yeah. And the celebrations yeah. ensued. And then yeah. switching gears now, on top of your illustrious collegiate career where you won basically everything there was to win on the team level and on the individual level, you're also a member of the U.S. Women's National Volleyball team that's heading to the Olympics on July 26th. We wanted to get a little preview of that for the listeners. What we know yeah. that you guys won the gold in Tokyo 2020, but what will be different this time around in Paris compared to the competition and the atmosphere in Tokyo? Man, yeah. So I wasn't on that Tokyo team, but I was still a part of the national team. You know, um, followed the whole entire thing, right? But I was actually talking to one of my teammates yesterday, Haley Washington, and I was like, "This is really like, like there's some there's some women on our, on my team that have." been to multiple olympics for sure but a lot of most of the team um their first olympics was in tokyo but that was during covid no fans were allowed it was a very like secluded village all of that so i was we were talking about it she's like how stoked are you to go to the olympics and i was like i really can't even describe it to you like i'm so excited and she was like i was like but wait it's kind of like your first real olympic experience too and she was like yeah oh it is for a lot of us um, so I'm really excited that it's going to be like a much more normal experience for sure. Um, and I think like 
everyone whose first Olympics was Tokyo was also that. But to preview the Olympics, my gosh, I mean, we're returning a lot of the same starters, or sorry, not, not only starters, but team members from Tokyo. Um, and yeah, like we're the reigning gold medalists and like they did something that's never been done before in USA volleyball history. That was the first Olympic gold medal. So it was so, so awesome to watch that. But um, yeah, I think like you're, like you're, we're always going to go in and try to go, try to go for the gold, right? Like that's definitely now the standard of USA volleyball. Um, but like, it's going to be really, really hard, <laughs> right? Like I was just talking to somebody else saying that, like, like the world is really good at volleyball right now. Mm -hmm. Really, really good at volleyball. You're seeing teams that have it that like weren't even in Tokyo that are now at the top of the world rankings. Like for example, Poland, I think that they were a team that was maybe below like world ranking number 20. And now they're in third, they're in like third place in the world. Um, really, really good team. You have Brazil, who's always historically good. You have Turkey, who has been really, really strong the past couple of years. Italy is always good, and they're playing at a very, very high level right now. Yeah, they're currently number um, one. Yeah, they're currently ranked number one. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, they're playing incredible volleyball right now. You got China, who's always good. Japan's always good. Like you have, this is also probably the strongest Olympic pool that has ever happened because they had changed the rules so that the teams, because before it wasn't just based on world ranking. It was based off of like certain qualifications and also regional and continental qualifications. So you had um, more diversity of, across from teams across different continents. But now they have it so it's mostly mostly based off of world ranking and also some qualification rounds. So um, the final spots are based off of world ranking. So this is probably the strongest Olympic pool like competition that we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, but we're really excited about that opportunity just because, like, I mean, the world's really good, but so are we. Absolutely. And we know that we, yeah. we can compete against the best of the best. We can go in and we can win against some of the best of the best. So um, it's going to be a really big challenge for us. And I mean, we're going to do everything in our power to bring the back gold medal and just compete at a really high level and compete together and compete hard. So, yeah, we're really, really excited about it. I'm super stoked about it. I, like, really cannot believe that I'm in this position. And, um, to even say that, like, I'm getting to compete for a gold medal is still kind of crazy. It hasn't really set yeah. in yet. So, well, yeah, we're really stoked. Yeah, Happening well, really soon. Yeah. Well, obviously, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Dana, for coming on the show with us today. Uh, everyone, tune in. July 29th, first game against China. Yeah, and we wish you and your team the best of luck in Paris. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dana.